how is it written? This oh, meeting is, is being picture. recorded. Hi, class. How you doing? Hi, Hello. teacher. Good evening. Very good, good evening. evening. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> the Tiernito one. Just oh, one yeah. day old that you have born. <laughs> I'm one day old. <laughs> I'm one day old. <laughs> yes, of course. Yes. How are you? Very, Very good. good. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm looking for my camera. I just came in to my room and I noticed that somebody must have taken it. Oh, oh I found oh. it. Oh, you found it. Hey, it's hot. It's hot today, huh? Yeah, all day has been hot. Yes. Man. Uh -huh. I don't yeah. know. I don't know how people prefer hot weather to cold. I prefer cold weather always. So do I. Yeah. Because cold weather, you can actually fix, but when it's hot, you can't. Only if you mm -hmm. have air conditioning. Yes, of course. Mm -hmm. It's true. But not everybody has air conditioning. No. No, of course. I have con have you Have you ever been to San Miguel for two or three days? I don't know. Only for one day. I've never been. Do you know that in San Miguel, it's like everybody has air conditioning? It's really? Because like in San Salvador, only people, you know, I mean, generally speaking, people that have money have air conditioning. Yeah. Okay. You know, like, oh, you have air conditioning. But in San Miguel, it's like everybody has air conditioning. It's something yeah. basic. Oh. And what about La Udio? Yes, that La Unión, San Miguel, everything. Oh, okay. Everything is is is. Mm -hmm. So how was how was your day? What did you do yesterday? Yesterday. Oh well, yesterday I celebrated the birthday of my teacher and my aunt too. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You have a very very beautiful voice. I was like. Wow, that was so nice. And this is Sandra, you said. Yeah, I was like, wow. Mm -hmm. Yes. And it's... you, you only, you only sing gospel music. See, si. yes, of course, I do. Only, only gospel music. Yeah. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. What singers do you like? Uh, I like Paul Wilber. Um, who else? Um, jo Josh Groban, uh, another one, uh, Ron Cannoli, okay. uh, Petra Price. Petra but, Price is, is like a rock, a, a Christian rock. Yeah, that's Petra. I remember them, right? Uh -huh. Yes. But they're like a heavy metal Christian rock, correct? <laughs> it's like a heavy metal one time, I remember maybe 10 or 15 years ago, I saw a commercial, you know, dun, 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 da, 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 you know, like, nya, 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 nya. por primera vez en El Salvador, and I said, oh my God, Iron Maiden is coming. Whoops, Iron yeah. Maiden. Uh -huh. And then, you know, the commercials, yeah, ba, da, da, da. Oh. Petra. Who the hell is Petra, man? No, hell <laughs> no. And then I, I'm, I'm sorry, who is Petra? He, uh -huh. And then I then I didn't know that they were a Christian rock band. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, I went, I, I was there. Oh, you In went Petra? there? <laughs> yes. Where, where are they from? From the United States, correct? Um, well, uh, they are from, uh, from Palestine or Belen, something like that. Oh, really? But they, Yes, but they are uh, they are living in, in in the United States, of course. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. They're Palestine and and they're Christian. Interesting. Yes, there are so many people from Palestine that are Christian. No, of course, of yeah. course. Um, no, but it's interesting though. Yes, it is. A Palestine rock band, a Palestine, because everything. Imagine they're Palestine, they're mm -hmm. a rock band. Mm. Mm. And they're Christian. 
Yes, of course. <laughs> so it's like everything, they did everything the other way. That's good. Yeah. All right, nice. All right, okay, let me see. Mm -hmm. Hey, very good. I, I like the examples that you were giving in passive voice. That was funny. But they were good. <laughs> Where? I, I was like, oh, man, in the chat, in the, in the WhatsApp chat. Yes. I think, uh, I think doctor, you said, I am drinking wine. The wine is being drunk by me. That was funny. Yeah. <laughs> Carlos. Carlos Gonzalez. Carlos? Hi, good evening, everyone. Good evening. Hello. Good evening. Carlos, I don't remember you. <laughs> I am you. <laughs> no, come on. I, I, I have been here, uh, but I uh, put on the the camera. I don't put on the camera. I don't put on the camera. Oh, that's why. Oh, okay. Uh, I, I recognize your voice now. Okay. okay. Is right. Saul there? Saul Romero there? No. We only have Blanca, Sandra, Yancy, Janet, Patricia, Carlos, Miguel, Roberto, Adonai, Walter, and Amilcar. Let me see. What happened to me? Oops. Okay, do you see my screen? Yes. Yes, we do. Yes, okay, it says instructions. Go over the information, then listen to the quiz show. Can you guess the occupations? Write a short answer. Just the name of the occupation. No capital letter is needed. Mm -hmm. So this is a quiz show. Mm -hmm. We have a casting director, location scout, screenwriter, Dialect coach, prop designer, script doctor. Can you imagine there's a script doctor? Yeah. Oops. Uh oh. Did I close my? I'm sorry, I closed my screen by accident. Yeah. Let me see. Let me open it again. You know what, Sandra? Yes? There is a singer that she's very, very good. Maybe... I don't know if you will like her because um, I'm, I'm only speaking about the, the um, gospel music. Yeah, because you only listen to gospel music, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes, only oh, gospel yeah. music. Oh, okay. There is a singer in this moment. Her name is LP, LP. She had a beautiful voice. Man, yes, she is good. She is. He's one of the the newest singers that I really like. Yeah, me too. Me too. It's different. The, Very different. Yes, because you know she she's not your typical Beyonce or pop singer. She has yeah. like a she she had like I was reading her story. She has a it's Aphrodite, right? Aphrodite. Yeah, it looks like a boy. <laughs> Yeah, I think I think she's like a man. Obviously, yeah. she is a lesbian, yeah. and um, but she has like this incredible voice. She was a, um, uh, yeah. uh, tenor or something, but she's very yeah. skinny. Yeah, yeah, but she has a very very good voice. So I imagine that anybody who is a, a singer 
anyone who is a good like likes to sing, they should listen to her because you I don't know about singing, but I really do do like her voice. Yeah, she's different. What is her name? Here I'm I'm going to I'm going uh, LP. Hold on. LP. And you will like that song. I, I put it on the chat. So when, when the class is over, you everybody should listen to that that song. It's very relaxing. It's a very relaxing song. Yeah. And she's singing live in that song. She's singing live, like yeah, it sounds like no, live. no, that song is live. It's it's acoustic. Yeah. Oh, no, 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 last time you oh it's a very good song. I like it. And uh, there, there's a part that she starts screaming, like in the middle of the song. She starts screaming opera. Man, she's good. Oh my god! No. Yeah. I have never, I have never received any any class of, of vowel vocal vocalization, if, if oh. we can say that. I have so, never received anything. Well, you are, you are a natural. Yeah. Well, but of course, that's why I don't I don't sing very well. I like to do it. No, but you, you do sing well. Oh, yeah. I have a friend. He's a very good friend of mine. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know, but do you remember a long time ago, there was a band in El Salvador that were named Bronco? Oh, yes, Bronco. No, but not the Mexican band. It was a Salvadorian band. No, no, yes, I think they are from Usultan. They are what? I think that they are. They were uh, from Usultan. No, no, no. They're from San Salvador. They were like a rock band. No, it was, it's been rock. Yeah. Be the, rock. The 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 singer. He's very very good, and um, yeah. every yes. time I. Every time I talk to him, he likes to listen to new people like that sing. Yeah. All right. Now let me see. Let me put. We run by Chente Sirian. Yes. Okay. Yeah. No, but the singer is a Nazi. The Nazi. Remember the the Nazi. That's what they call him. Uh, tell me if you can hear, please. Okay. Five. Exercise nine. Can you hear? Perspectives. Yes. Okay. Quiz show. Yes. Part A. Listen to a quiz show. Can you guess the occupations? One. Uh blank who finds appropriate places to shoot scenes gets to travel all over the world two a blank is someone who chooses an actor for each part in a movie three a blank who makes sure that everything on a movie set looks realistic creates the objects that the characters use Four, a blank is someone who develops and expands a story idea into a full movie script. Five, a blank is a language specialist who works with actors on their accents. Six, a blank who is used when an original screenplay needs more work, makes jokes funnier, and dialogues more realistic. So what do you think is um, appropriate, number one, and finds an appropriate place to shoot scenes, gets to travel all over the world? Uh, locations. Okay, good. Scout and see, it's a, it's a profession. It's a person that looks for something. 
Talent Scout Location Scout, etc. Okay. Did you watch the movie Fargo? No. No, no, did you? no, I didn't. Oh man, you never seen that movie? It's, it's very, very good. Can you repeat it, the name, please. Fargo. No, no, I'm sorry. Argo. It's called Argo. It was like the movie is a it was a true story. It was like in in the eighties, Afghanistan. The contrary of Afghanistan, like similar to what happened in Cuba, they took the country. They took the country, the los radicales, right? Mm -hmm. I think it was in the end of the 70s or the beginning of the 80s. So mm -hmm. all the embassies in one day, they escaped, mm -hmm. except the United States embassy. Los mm -hmm. tomaron de rehen. They couldn't escape anymore. Oh my God! Yeah, so um, they were the the United States government was thinking, what do we do? How do we get the people out? Mm -hmm. So they invented a movie, and the movie was called Argo. So they sent a location scout <laughs> to Afghanistan, but this was all by the government. They sent a location scout to Afghanistan, and he told the government, look, we are producers. We want to make a movie here and see how beautiful Afghanistan is, et cetera. And the, and the government of Afghanistan said, ah, OK, good. OK, yes, you have permission to film here. So in that moment, aprovecharon and they escaped, and they took all the people from the embassy, and they left. So, like, the people from the embassy, they dress like actors. Yes, as he los sacaron. It's a good movie. Ganó un Oscar, creo. But the thing, it was, that was the location scout. Con esa paja entraron. There's also a movie about El Salvador que se llama Salvador. Yes. Have you, have you seen that movie? Yes, I have. Yeah, from Oliver Stone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was. Yes, it is. That was a good movie. Mm. But some, but some were some uh, scenes are not true. Yeah. We're not. No, but but you know, like before the movies that they made about El Salvador, like they said, San Salvador, El Salvador. 1980 and they put a cathedral and they put a chicken. Yes. It's like, come on. Mm -hmm. You know, que son, they made they made it que Salvador para ser como una finca, you know. But esa esa de Oliver Stone era un poco más. Yeah, that was a location scout too. Mm -hmm. Okay, so so number one is a location scout. Number two. A blank is someone who chooses an actor for each part in a movie. Casting director. Casting director. Good. Okay. A casting director. Oh, casting directors have a very bad reputation in Hollywood. They have a very, very bad reputation. Reputation. Oh, reputation. Really? Yes. Maybe because they receive money. Yes, or because yeah, and they have sex with all the actresses or actors. Okay. Because I um, imagine a woman; she wants to be an actress so badly. They tell hey. Yo la puedo poner una película, pero, you know, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Lo que le pasó a este, al, este famoso executive. Al, al Weinstein. ¿cómo es? He's in jail in this moment. Mm. He did that. He had sex with, like, almost all the famous actresses in Hollywood because mm -hmm. he had the power. Mm. But now he's in jail paying. Number three, a blank 
is who makes sure that everything on a movie set looks realistic, creates the objects that the characters use. The designer. The designer. Prop designer. Prop designer. Very good. Do you know what is a prop? <laughs> no. No. No, prop would be like utileria. Ah. Accessories. Yes, uh, they're props. Mm -hmm. Atuendos? No. Objects. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Yeah, so it's como, hey, that's props. What is that? It's utileria. Have you ever gone to Universal Studios? Yeah, no. Yes, have. I have. Yeah. No, okay. Well, in there you realize that the movies are, man, todo es falso. Everything. I remember. I remember they said, "Oh, this is." Do you recognize this street? Yeah. Wow, la casa, la la calle de. Una de las partes de Home Alone, de mi pobre angelito. And you're like, wow. Y cuando uno se da vuelta, solo era en cartón. Like, <laughs> like, really? <laughs> so everything is like props. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, the last, I'm sorry. No, Number no, four. No, a blank is someone who develops and expands a story idea into a full movie script. <laughs> Screenwriter. 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 I think that's a very difficult job, a screenwriter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can you imagine put all that story in a script? Hmm? Oh. My God. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, Number five, a blank is a language specialist who works with actors on their accents. Dialect. Dialect coach. Dialect coach. Dialect coach. Mm -hmm. Yes. Number six. What is uh, the correct pronunciation, teacher? Sorry. Dialect. Dialect. Dialect coach. Dialect. Dialect. Coach. Mm -hmm. Dialect coach. Thank then, you. You're welcome. And next we have the last one, six. A blank is who is used when original screenplay needs more work, makes jokes funnier, and dialogues more realistic. Script doctor. Script doctor. Script doctor. Yeah, a script doctor. So he like rechecks. They forgot one person. Which one? The music. Yeah, that's true. And that is very important. Oh, of course. The sound. Or you know, you know also too, which is a very interesting job, is the sound effects. Yes. <sighs> one day when when you can watch in YouTube how they make the sounds in 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 a movie do you know how when you see people and the, the, you you hear them walking and you mm -hmm. hear you hear mm -hmm. this yeah. mm -hmm. that's so cool because they're actually watching the scene and they have many props in the studio and like uh, la de vaqueros you know like when they get the horse and you hear the mm -hmm. and they have many things you know like making the noise Mm. That, that that must be a very fun job. Mm -hmm. Okay. So listen, by the end of this lesson, participants will learn and understand defining and non-defining mm -hmm. relative clauses. Let's see what that is. I know we have studied relative clauses before, but this time we'll learn a little bit more. Let's stay and find out the difference between defining and non-defining relative clauses. Defining and non-defining relative clauses. 
Defining relative clauses are used to identify people. A dialect coach is a language specialist. She works with actors on their accents. A dialect coach is a language specialist who works with actors on their accents. A dialect coach is a language specialist that works with actors on their accents. Non-defining relative clauses give further information about people. A location scout finds places to shoot scenes. He travels all over the world. A location scout who finds places to shoot scenes travels all over the world. As we mentioned on the intro video, we have two types of relative clauses. Defining and non-defining relative clauses. Let's look at the difference between them. Number one, defining relative clauses. The information in the clause is necessary. It shows us which person is being described or talked about. For example, the actor who starred in that movie is very talented. Number two, non-defining relative clauses. The information isn't necessary. It is extra information that is added to the sentence. For example, Tom Cruise, who starred in that movie, is very talented. I want to point out that commas are used before and after a non-defining relative clause. Think about the people involved in making a movie. Choose to and describe what they do using defining or non-defining relative Example, one, oh, no. defining. A location scout who finds places to shoot scenes travels all over the world. As we mentioned on the intro video, we have two types of relative clauses. Defining and non-defining relative clauses. Let's look at the difference between them. Number one, defining relative clauses. The information in the clause is necessary. It shows us which person is being described or talked about. For example, the actor who starred in that movie is very talented. Number two, non-defining relative clauses. The information isn't necessary. One. Okay, so let's do let's do this. It's very simple. Look, defining. You give important information. Let's look at the difference between them. Number one, defining relative clauses. So the, the information is necessary. For example, a nurse, a nurse who studied medicine helps the doctors in the hospital. Correct? Yes, the information so, is yes. the information is necessary. Yes. Like in this case, it says a location scout who has to look for locations travels all over the world. Correct? Yes. Now a non-defined is like the information. Now, a non-defined is a non-defined clause is extra information that's really not important. For example, okay, the nurse who is very pretty will help the doctor in the operation. Who is very pretty is not necessary. Yes, it's really not important. Mm -hmm. But this is an example, you understand? It was, I, I just, I gave you extra information. The extra information, it's okay. I mean, it's not something bad. It's just really something that important of the interest of the topic. More Im important is a nurse who is a special, who is a specialist in anesthesia will help the doctor. That's important information because of, of the scenario. Oh, 
okay? Okay. So the difference is how important the information is or not. So let's see. Knowledge check. It says, read the following sentences and the, and the non-defined relative clause in parentheses to the sentences. Remember to use commas for the non-denying non -denying relative clause and period at the end. Follow the example, like number one, it says a foreign correspondent travels all over the world who writes about events in other countries. It says a foreign correspondent, comma, who writes about events in other countries, comma, travels the world. Here, let me see, let's show the answer in solo para, because I imagine you already did this. Okay. Number two, a web page designer needs sophisticated computer knowledge. Who is a graphic artist? A web page designer who is a graphic artist needs sophisticated computer knowledge. Number three, it says, an additional page editor gives opinions about current issues, issues. who is a daily newspaper columnist. An editorial page director who is a daily newspaper columnist gives opinions about current issues. A gossip, do you know what gossip is? Yes, a chisme. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. Yes, it is. <laughs> a gossip columnist writes about celebrities and scandals. Mm -hmm. Who gets to go to fabulous parties? Sorry, what, what gossip means? Chisme. Chisme. Sorry? Ah. Yeah. She likes gossip girls. Yeah. Yeah, gossip girls. Mm -hmm. What are you Thank gossiping you. about? Mm -hmm. yeah. So it says a gossip columnist, comma, who gets to go to fabulous parties, comma, writes about right. celebrities and scandals. Here, I want you to uh, give me an example. Uh, Let me see. Teacher, in this case, yes. uh, uh, the part between uh, commas, that's an important. Oh. It doesn't important or is it's important. Well, a uh, gossip columnist who gets yeah. to go, no, it's not important, but the yeah. of course, the, 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 the uh, this is a non-defining. Ah, okay, okay. This part, because really a gossip columnist who gets to go to fabulous parties, which is a good gossip, but it's really not important about yeah. that doesn't that doesn't emphasize that what a gossip columnist is. Yeah. But but to to get some gossips, he has to go to to the fabulous parties. Yes, but in this case, then you need a designing clause. Oh. But he, but why, why a party? Why only a party? What if he's he's not invited to a party? To see if they get drunk. <laughs> for example. No, no, of course that's why. But that would be an undefining because that would be additional information. Oh, okay. Like, let me give an example. Tell me if this is defining or non-defining clause. Okay. A teacher in El Salvador who gets paid very bad, teaches one shift or two shifts? Excuse me, I didn't understand the last words. Okay, in schools, there's, there are usually two shifts, the morning yeah. shift and the afternoon yeah. oh, shift. Shifts. Oh, yeah, I know, I know. Uh -huh. so, so, listen, so listen to this. A school teacher, a public school teacher in El Salvador who mm -hmm. gets paid very bad, mm -hmm. teaches one or two Shift. or two shifts. Mm -hmm. Would well, that be the... defining or non-defining? Mm -hmm. Non-defining. Non non yeah. Because I didn't have to mention who gets paid very bad. Just yeah. <laughs> extra information. But the important information is they teach one or two shifts. Two shifts. Yes, of course. Um, I heard the teacher said 
nosotros los pobresores. Pobresores. Yeah. Yes. Why, wow, but you know what, actually, what well, teachers, they get paid bad anyway. But um, in this case, private teachers get paid less than public school teachers, correct? Really? Yeah. Um, yes. Yes, it is. Yes, because... Um, like, let's say, depending on the school, right? But I think for a kindergarten and a public school, I think the minimum they get paid is $600 for oh, one shift, okay. I think. And in a public, in a private school, it's like $300. Dear me. Yeah. That's why yeah. it... Mm -hmm. That's the gossip. I don't know. <laughs> no, 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 it is true. We did the plagiarism already. Remember, we read the story? The plagiarism. Oh, yes, I remember it. All right, let's do the video five. You're about to watch the very last video of this course. We hope you enjoy them. We suggest for you to keep on watching and practicing your language. Hi, I'm Kai Nagata. I'm a television journalist based here in Montreal, Canada, and I'm also a lifelong cyclist. Right now, cycling is getting more and more popular in Montreal, with 10% of all commuters getting to work by bike, like me, and city officials want that number to increase. More bicycles means more bicycle traffic, and that means sharing the road. There's lots of opinions about how pedestrians, cyclists, and drivers should act and interact in the city. Let's find out what people think. Is there anything Montreal could do to improve things for cyclists? Yeah, well, I think the city should try to expand the system of cycle paths. One thing I learned this morning is that one shouldn't drive against traffic, <laughs> because that's a problem. Sometimes there are corners uh, where drivers just cannot see you coming, and so you should really try to avoid driving against the traffic if possible. What advice do you have for cyclists in the city? Cyclists should have their own bike lane and drive towards the oncoming traffic, because they will be able to better see what the others parked cars are doing, whether they're driving or parked, the cyclists will have more control. What do you think drivers ought to do to help keep cyclists safe? Drivers should always check their rear view mirrors before opening their doors so that they don't hit a bicycle that's coming up behind them. Do you spend more time driving or riding a bike? Driving. What do you think Montreal could do to encourage cycling as an option for people? Uh, maybe education, maybe some restriction to driving downtown. So maybe making it harder for drivers. Right. right, that's the nature, the human nature. What advice would you give people who are cycling with children? There should be a law that says all children starting from age six should be educated on the rules of bicycling. What do you think of the idea of kids wearing bike helmets? I think they should, but a lot of them won't. What do you think the city could do to make cyclists even safer in Montreal? Um, I think it, it would be best if bicycles and buses were not on the same street. Why do you think that? Because they're not compatible. The bus is very large and we're uh, very small and not protected, but we drive approximately the same speed or on the same path. What do you think cyclists should do to help keep themselves safe in traffic? Be more aware of both automobiles and pedestrians. I think uh, there are ways in which sometimes we cut corners in terms of moving through traffic, um, particularly moving traffic. I think cyclists need to be aware. What do you think when you see cyclists riding around with headphones in? I don't think it's the best idea. Uh, you have to be alert. Um, you don't often need your ears when you're cycling, but every once in a while you hear something that 
indicate something that you didn't see. And I, for safety reasons, that I think, you know, I'd like to listen, I'd like to bike and listen to music too. But if you're going to do that, I think you should do that in a park. What advice do you have for cyclists in the city? People should never wear Walkmans or iPods or whatever uh, while they cycle because a lot of cycle safety has to do with listening. What advice would you give people who are cycling with children? I think cycling on the sidewalk is fine uh, with kids. Uh, I think most pedestrians are at ease with it. Uh, you know, look here, look at how wide this sidewalk is. If you have young children who are just learning to cycle, I don't see anything wrong with cycling on the sidewalk along here. What's your impression of Montreal as a city for cycling? Cyclists should take a bigger piece of the city and play a bigger role in the city. And I think that uh, drivers and even pedestrians should relax a bit about cyclists. Cyclists are good for cities. Wherever bikes and cars share the road, people are going to have opinions about how they ought to interact. Montreal is no exception. And we may not have solved all the problems yet, but we're working on it. I'm Kai Nagata reporting from Montreal, Quebec, Canada. Okay, como se dice acera en inglés? Sidewalk? Sidewalk, yes. Y un cruce de calle? Para peatones? Corner? Pedestrian? Zebra, Cross. zebra, yeah, it's zebra line? Or street or? Zebra. zebra line? Crosswalk. 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 <clears throat> All right, so the lesson objective here is the recommendations, opinions with ought to, should, have to, and must. Remember I told you guys the difference. What is must and have to? What is the difference? Have to and, and must. It's the same. Yeah, it is the same, but there is a difference, though. Uh, um, my God. How to uh, have a consequence Hi. advice, I, I think. think. And most uh, is a law uh, rela relate with you, uh, something legal. Yes, authority. It's true. Okay. Have to and must is the same thing. Hey, tomorrow I have to go to work and I must go to work. Good. But sometimes when you say, so what is the difference? Oh, okay. The difference is that there are some things that are, are legal. For example, child support, la manutención. La deben de pagar. O sea, los que están en eso. La deben de pagar o la tienen que pagar. They have to. They must. Oh, they must. Eso es tono de autoridad ilegal. Tienen que es an obligation. It's have to and must, pero the police or lawyer le va a decir, Mr. Miguel Antonio, you must pay that every month. I remember you say uh, when my boss uh, say me a um, suggestion, not this suggestion, is where he can use must. Yes. But when my companions or or the team group say me a suggestion, he need use the have to because don't have the authority. Yes. Mm -hmm. So ma must. must is for legal issues or authorities. Your teacher, your doctor, the police, your mother, your father. Yes. Your wife. <laughs> no, I'm joking. No. No, no. Yes, of course. In English students should okay, be required so to speak English all the time. Do you want to give a recommendation or an opinion about this? Stay and learn how. Giving recommendations and opinions. When you think something is a good idea, cyclists should be required to wear a helmet. 
pet owners shouldn't be allowed to walk dogs without a leash. People ought to be required to end parties at midnight. When you think something is absolutely necessary. Laws must be passed to control the noise from car alarms. People mustn't be permitted to park motorcycles on the sidewalks. A rule has to be made to require cycling lanes on city streets. Something has got to be done to stop littering. In this lesson, we will use models plus B plus past infinitive to give recommendations. When we give opinions, sometimes these opinions might be stronger than other times. When we think something is a good idea, we use should and ought to. And when we think something is absolutely necessary, we use must and have to or have got to. So if I present these two sentences to you, are you able to understand the difference? Number one, cyclists should be required to wear a helmet. Number two, cyclists must be required to wear a helmet. Very good. The first sentence is an opinion, whereas sentence number two is absolutely necessary. It's pretty much a law. Hi, I want you to give me one reason for and one against about the following ideas. A student should not be allowed to translate or speak their native language in class. Type your reasons on our discussion box. So really, it's really not, not, not that complicated. It's a, should is a, it's an advice. Should, deberías de, ahí está en ti si lo haces o no. Yes? Pero un juez jamás le va a decir a, a Miguel Antonio, Miguel Antonio debería de pagar su manutención. No, es porque no es consejo, es obligación legal, Miguel Antonio. Debe de pagar su manutención. Or there will be a consequence. Every month. Mm -hmm. All right. So for example, number, number one, it says people blank to use cell phones while driving. People shouldn't be allowed should not be allowed or should be allowed. It shouldn't be allowed. Shouldn't be allowed. Bueno, realmente esta es una ley que you must not use a cell phone when you drive. Que nadie la cumpla. I include me myself. Mm -hmm. Pero si un policía lo para, tiene todo el derecho de multarlo. Ah, but it was an emergency. No, I'm sorry. If it's an emergency, Go to the sidewalk with your car and call. There's no excuse. Number one, people blank to use cell phones while driving. Shouldn't be allowed. People should not be allowed to use cell phones while driving. Must not be permitted. Yeah. Must not be um, permitted. For me, it should be must. Mm -hmm. uh, the answer could be should not be allowed. See, sí. for example, you know, in my in my case, I think that Bad Bunny shouldn't come to El Salvador. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the same me too. Yeah, it's true. Mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah, because there's this band que se llamaba Marduk. Pero ese, ese nivel de música yo ya no lo oigo porque I don't understand it, pero es una banda de rock de... <laughs> y hicieron todo lo posible because they are satanic. They are satanic y la asamblea, ok, que no vengan because ah, es contra la moral. Good, I understand that. Very good. And Bad Bunny? Same case. Uh -huh. It's similar, different, different colors, almost different fruits, but the same flavor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, hey, apples and oranges. Do you understand that expression? No. Apples and oranges, no. Okay. Marduk could not come to El Salvador because they are satanic and that's not moral. Correct? Yep. I understand that. Yeah. Yeah. But why 
why is it okay that that um, Bad Bunny comes? Yeah, Bad Bunny is not satanic, maybe, but he's terrible. Look, <laughs> okay, he's terrible. Yeah. Um, it's the same thing. It's con que morales el tema moral. The two are bad. Yeah. What is so apples and oranges? They are different, but they are fruit. Yeah. Yeah, I get it. Mm -hmm. Young people blank to get married before age 15. Answer must not be permitted. Yes, must not be permitted. Yes. Companies blank to give workers periodic breaks. Should be required. Should be required. Mire, le voy a dar un consejo. Ven, ought to. Mm -hmm. Forget mm -hmm. it. Ya no lo usen. Okay. Why? Okay, very good question, Rafael. Estaba esperando que me dijera why. ¿Cuándo fue la última vez que oíste que alguien diga how to? Nobody. I don't remember. Any... Yeah. I, in, in, like in, in, every, uh -huh, in every everyday English, now you don't hear that anymore. Ought to. It's like yes. a, a, a shall. I remember that word shall. Yeah, like shall. Uh -huh. Yeah. Like shall. Yeah. I mean, it's correct. You ought to. Ought to is the same thing as should. Pero yeah, really, within time, that word has been disappearing. So, the, so here, anything is possible. Mm -hmm. Scientists blank to use animals for research. I've got to be permitted. Be permitted. You know, scientists should use the mareros here for, <laughs> for, <laughs> yeah. for research. Yeah, it's like use the mareros here or anything. Laws blank to ban the sale of handguns. Must be passed. Must be passed to ban the sale. You know what ban is, right? No, teacher. I don't ban, no, and I do not hand, hand, handgun, handgun. Or maybe it's. Um, ban es como parar, prohibir. Oh, yeah. De hecho, de ahí viene la palabra Ray-Ban. Porque eran lentes para pro, parar o prohibir los rayos del sol. Ah. Oh. They were like Ray-Bans. Ah, the handguns, handguns are uh, pistolas or something like that. Yes, handguns. Yeah. The sale of fur products, do you know what fur is? Fur. Piel, no. pero piel de pelo del animal, como. No es, skin, no es cuero, no, that's, that's leather. Or fur, fur is like, um, ¿Cómo se llaman esos, esos perros que son bien peluditos? Pelpa, peluche. French poodle. Okay, the French poodles. They have fur. Uh, or chow chow. I don't know. But fur es lo peludo. No, chow chow is. is, is oh, yeah, the, the chow chows, the chow chow. Mm -hmm. They're the ones that have the, uh, the purple tongue, correct? Mm -hmm. Aunque esto ya no es común, but remember like in the 80s or 90s, elegant or rich people usaban chaquetas de, 
Sorrio. Mm. It was a very stupid fashion. <laughs> oh, qué lindo, qué sorrio. Also. ¿Sabían que en el holocausto las mujeres, las esposas de los nazis, usaban piel humana para hacer um, lámparas? Oh, my God. Imagine that hobby, those, oh, man. No, no sabía. Yeah. Se encontraron unas with human-like flesh to make lamps. Oh, man, terrible. The sale of crazy. yes, it's so ridiculous. Number eight, something blank to stop clubs from staying open so late. Should be done. Do you remember a long time ago when they closed casinos? Colonia, Antioquia, because there were like many casinos everywhere, remember? Um, and then the government, they took action and says, no, casinos are not good. Oh, so moral, separan familias, people lose money. But what is that different from a prostíbulo or a bar? It's the same thing. People go there, they lose money. They get drunk. They lose their family. Entonces hay que ser parejos. Si cierran uno, cierran todo. In my opinion. Your opinion. Yeah, because if they say casinos are not good because they are not moral for families. Oh, okay, what about lips? <laughs> That's moral? No. no. Or a bar? It isn't cheap, is it? Do you know what cheap is? Ready to keep on learning? Not Do you know what? Cheap. Barato. barato. What is the difference between Pollo Campero and Don Pollo? Uh, Don Pollo, Don Pollo is, is cheaper than the price. Pollo. Yeah, the price. So Don Pollo is cheaper. Yeah. That is cheap. Cheap es algo barato o bajero. <laughs> También es bajero, you know, hey, man, that's cheap. Y para decir barato <laughs> sin decir bajero. Okay, good. Because cheap, cheap is really like a negative word. Pero para decir barato se puede decir cheap o not expensive. What well, is better for use, for example, in a store? Well, for example, um, depends, you know, like imagine you're talking to, you're talking to Simán, o con uno de los Simanes, no le va a decir, hey, pero Prisma Moda is cheaper than Simán. Ahí sí hay que es porque está hablando con el dueño, right? Ahí le puedo decir, hey, but Prisma Moda is less expensive. Yeah. Como menos caro que Simán. Pero really cheap, cheap no es, no es tan ofensiva la palabra, es simplemente barato. But for example, if you say it, uh, uh, what, for example, and you say this is better, but this a dollar is most is less cheap, uh, less expensive or is is cheaper than this other. I'm sorry hold on I'm sorry repeat please for example if you are a salesman and you and you offer uh, for example a, a watch for a customer and mm -hmm. you say this is better Watch, however, this other watch is less 
expensive or you say it's, it's cheaper? You can say it's, it's cheaper. Very... Okay, you can use the both. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. But like, let's say if you go with your girlfriend to uh, buy a ring, Uh -huh, a joyería, you know, like, oh, let me see your diamonds, please. How much is this ring? Oh, $50,000. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, do you have anything less expensive? <laughs> Menos caro? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, está tu novia viendo. Yeah, okay. Y tú no no, baby, muy caro. No, it's okay. The best for you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> y también cheap es como, ah, that's cheap. No anden comprando los celulares esos, whatever, they're cheap. Los, very cool. Remember, do they still exist? Remember, remember, like 10 years ago, Regia, it was considered cheap beer. Now it's expensive. Now it's considered like elegant beer. Like, oh, Regia. Yeah, but uh, like 10 years ago, era la, la cerveza de pobre, the Regia. And now, I don't know why, but now it's like everybody likes it. Like, oh, this is good. So before you people you say, oh Regia's cheap. And Bahara. Listen, tag questions. Do you know what it's a tag question? Uh, the end of the of a sentences that mean uh, verdad or no es así. Cuando hacen una cuando hacen ustedes una pregunta, bueno, saben que les voy a dar un ejemplo. Tag question en buen salvadoreño cuando terminamos en va. Vea, vea, no sería vea. <laughs> Yeah. Daniel, the, there is a lot of back uh, noise or static when uh, in your I'm microphone. Sorry. No, 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 it's okay, but I don't know if you know that. There you go. Good. Como Patricia, usted doctora, vea. Yes, teacher, I'm okay. gynecology. Okay. You are a what? I'm sorry? Gynecologist. Okay, good. Pero hoy que terminé, vea. Como, <laughs> it's a Salvadorian way, but the for, formally would be Patricia, usted doctora. ¿No es así? Cuando hago esa pregunta, aren't you? Because I'm really not that positive. I'm I'm not 100% positive. I am 90% positive that ella me dijo que era doctora. Yes? Ahora, si obviamente yo recuerdo y sé por un hecho de que usted es doctora, no le hago una pregunta, solo, you know, oh, Patricia is a doctor. Okay. <laughs> so, that is a tag question. When you are not sure, when you are not sure, you start with a positive sentence and finish with a negative question for example patricia you are a doctor aren't you yes i am okay porque estaba más seguro que si sí lo era que no patricia usted doctora no es así igual español termino con negativo okay. now if i am not sure no, no patricia. sé que doctora pero no no but Patricia, you're not a surgeon, are you? No, I am not. Oh, yes, you are a gynecologist. Good. 
Ahora, si vio aquí, yo empecé negativo y terminé positivo. Sí. Because I said, Patricia, you are not a surgeon. Are you? <laughs> you see, it's, that's what we will practice tomorrow. Oh, okay. All right. The tag okay. questions. Okay, class, I'll see you tomorrow. Have a wonderful day. Thank you very much. Thank bye, you, bye. teacher. Thank you. Have a nice day. Bye. Nice bye. Night. bye.